I've been diagnosed with plenty of things over the years. Um, in fact, I've no exams, but I could have allergies, which initialed all my diagnosis, which gave me quite a really good CV. Yeah. Um, Why not put those letters after your name? It's something, isn't it? Well, I have them on a the T-shirt, but yeah. I haven't got it today. Um, but yes, it's caused me to hear voices all the time. So that's all day and all night. And they're quite intrusive at the moment. Yeah. So I'm really having to concentrate hard. I see and uh, hear and smell things that no one else can through my childhood experiences. Um, I can dissociate quite easily through re-experiencing trauma. What do you mean by dissociate in that context? Um, well, I could smell something that could re I could re-experience trauma from my childhood, which leaves me very much at risk, so I could wander off at any time. Yeah. Um, so it is difficult, and I'm difficult to manage, but the nurses that have looked after me over the years have managed really well, and because of the new things that go on now, it's very different. I haven't been in hospital for about 16 months when I was that typical revolving door patient because of the new services and the way we work with people now. So I'm very fortunate, and without the staff that have nursed me over the years, the bottom line is I wouldn't be here talking to you. And they've done that for so many others as well. So you don't get you don't get cured from hearing voices, you just learn to deal with those voices. I manage better now with certain coping strategies, but they're very intrusive, they're very nasty. Some people um, hear nice voices and don't want to lose them. I, I do a group in the community with um because we co-produce stuff now and I work with the psychologist in the community because mental illness is very, very misunderstood, especially voices and self-harm, which I still do. Um, and it's quite um, destructive, but there's a reason why. Mm. I, mean, I, I don't want to distress you by getting too much into it, but can you describe, do you describe how it feels when you say you hear voices? And we all hear voices to a certain extent in our head, but you, you hear them differently, louder, a wider variety of voices. Can, can you try to sort of help us understand how it feels? I hear voices um, from my past, people who were really bad to me, um, and they're still there all the time, day and night, so they wake me. Um, I actually truly believe, truly believe I can be in one room and think they're shouting me from somewhere else. They're very distressing, but I manage because the help for people with mental illness is different now. So in, in, in what sense? In the past, they would just medicate, would they? Or I've had probably every medication known to man on the moon, I think. Um, I probably could write a MIMS about the symptoms. Um, um, so, yeah, I've been medicated quite quite a lot to help the symptoms, but now I'm only on... I'm still on medication and I still need to be. I understand that, but I have a lot of other coping strategies to, to use as well. So can you explain how the coping strategies work? I have to be very focused to be able to do what I do now, um, and I have to have a lot of support from the people I work alongside in Medicare. Um I can't really give you a, a real coping skill. I just manage different now, so I have a dialogue with them um, and can manage that way. But when I go home from being focused all day, completely focused all day, like I'm having to be now because I'm hearing other things in these headphones yeah. as well as them. And my voice, and which is never voice. easy to deal with. <laughs> um, so I have to remain really focused. But then when I go home, then they come back with a vengeance and they're very loud, intrusive, scary. Um, so I do things that help me now. Probably I have a diagnosis of OCD, so I utilise that to great effect Char um, to sort of di divert me from those voices and lots of other techniques, but I have a, a process when I go home and my family really help me now. When At first, maybe they didn't understand. They thought I was just barking. My, I'm naturally potty, actually, so... <laughs> but. <laughs> That's a separate thing. Um, so it sounds like you can't ignore them to a certain extent. No. You have to, I don't know what the, the correct verb is, you have to sort of not, not embrace them exactly but, exactly, but deal with them. I think over the years, with the right help and support, I've come to accept who I am, why. I've got an understanding of why I have mental health issues and I've had a lot of help and support to do that and accept what happened to me. And all I can do now is try and make a difference for others that hear voices or have any mental illness, because I have got quite a few diagnoses. So. so what's it like for you dealing with the, the other patients here? What do you mean? 
What do you, does it bring back bad memories for you? Do you see yourself sort of 20 years ago? Um, can you, I don't know, can you see in their eyes that they're going through the kind of thing that you go through? I've got, well, we all go through different things. We're all individuals. But how lovely to come in here. I've seen a lot of people this morning that I've been on wards with when I've been poorly. And you know what? It's just amazing. It, I mean, I stayed here then, um, a week before it opened and how wonderful to see all the staff being able to work in a different way, have the space to do it, and, and just all work together with, our, with the patients. We all work together because that's what you need to do is work together and try and understand and educate people to challenge that stigma of mental illness. We need to do that in a big way. Stigma is horrible. It destroys you. And voices can destroy you. Mental illness can destroy you. But with the right help and support, you know, you can't half bite back.